Welcome to my channel, my name is Allison, and for today's video I thought it would be fun to pull out all of my most worn clothing and shoes and accessories and just kind of dive into what I actually got the most wear out of the season. I think the end of each season is really the perfect time to take a step back, look at your closet, figure out what clothes you actually wore, and also determine where there are gaps in your wardrobe. Because of course right now a lot of brands are having their end of the season summer sales. So it's a great time to pick up something for a good price. I used to be that person that would shop the sales section without any sort of direction and just kind of like pick up anything and everything that I thought was cute because it was on sale. So I'm trying not to do that and shop the sales section as much anymore. But if you have a specific gap in your summer wardrobe and you happen to find something that's nicely discounted, then I think it's actually a great opportunity to look for something. So yeah, I think there's a lot to be learned here and hopefully before the summer of next year, I come back and rewatch this video so I have a better idea of what I actually need to shop for and where I should focus my summer wardrobe. If you've seen any of my other recent styling videos, you'll probably have seen a lot of these pieces already, but not all of the things that I've set aside here are necessarily my favorite pieces of clothing, but they're definitely some of the most practical and the ones that I've definitely tried and true. So let's start off with shoes. This is a much more manageable category I have. Just a couple of options here. I have three pairs of sandals here as well as a pair of sneakers that I've actually been getting a lot more wear out of towards the end of the summer. But yes, these are the three sandals that I was pretty much living in for the majority of the season. And it's really easy to see why. All of them have really nice thick straps with a lot of foot coverage to keep your foot nice and comfy and secure. They all have really nice thicker, softer soles to them. The Birkenstocks were definitely more of like a casual, just kind of throw on and run errands type of shoe, but these are the sandals that I would reach for when styling most of my outfits. And I think the one thing that I did find to be lacking in this assortment of shoes was actually a color. There were a couple of occasions where I wish I had something in the middle, something like more of like camel, cognac type of brown color. I love that color for summer. And it would be nice to just have something that's in between the depth of these two colors when I want to add a little bit of contrast to an outfit, but the black is too harsh. I do actually have sandals in that color, but they're just so uncomfortable that I refuse to wear them, which of course just goes to show how important comfort is for shoes, and no matter how cute it is, I would much rather wear something that may not look as good, but is going to be a lot more comfortable to wear. And then as for sneakers, this has actually kind of been a surprise to me, but I've been reaching for these sneakers nonstop for the past couple of weeks. I love white sneakers and I have a couple of different options, but I've been loving this silhouette and the style of them. They're not too chunky at all. They're a lot slimmer than the Nike Air Force Ones, but they're also not as slim and perfect as the common projects. I don't remember what the name of this style is from Adidas, but I do actually really like this more soft crinkled leather on it. And these definitely have like a little bit more of that retro vintage look to them. They're really similar to that popular style from Reebok. I've been getting a ton of Instagram ads from a sneaker brand called Say, and those also have a very similar look. And yeah, I would definitely recommend any of those options. I think they're super cute, easy to style, and an easy way to add just like a little bit more color into your outfit. I do like that these have a little bit of a pop of red. Okay, next let's dive into the clothing. And first we're gonna start off with tops. This might be a little boring, but the first kind of top that I want to talk about and the top that I definitely wore the most this season and definitely throughout the entire year are t-shirts. These four over here that I have are definitely the ones that I wore the most this season. So here we have two white t-shirts and these are definitely the essential of all wardrobe essentials. I don't actually even have a white t-shirt that fits particularly well but I still wear them all the time because when I don't know what to wear and I just need to throw something on that looks decent with whatever I'm wearing on the bottom, a white t-shirt never ever fails. Before, I never really put that much thought into the t-shirts that I have. There are definitely ones that I like the fit of better, but I'm taking this opportunity to really actually figure out what I look for in a t-shirt and what I really like. So this t-shirt over here is from Uniqlo. It's their Pima cotton t-shirt. I love Uniqlo. I think they have really great basics, but I don't think I'm the biggest fan of their t-shirts. Even on the Supima cotton, 
I do actually feel like this material feels a little bit thick in my hands. It's a little bit of like a thicker, slightly stiffer, and more stretchy type of cotton. And because of that, I don't think the drape on this t-shirt is the best. Another area that's really important to me on a t-shirt is the collar. This t-shirt has a pretty standard, like thinner, kind of elastic collar. I'm not actually sure how to describe the collar of a t-shirt. Some of them, like this green one here, definitely has more of a pronounced ribbing. The Uniqlo one does have a little bit of a stretch to it, but I would say like not as much as maybe this shirt. And you can kind of see how even on the hanger, the collar kind of like puckers up a little bit. I really don't like that. I find that they don't lay very nicely on your neck. And if you try to layer on top, it just kind of moves everything around and I find that it just doesn't look like it fits very well. Overall, I don't love either of these t-shirts, but I do get by with them because I do actually like the silhouette and the overall fit of them. I also like the sleeves. I think they're pretty flattering. So this video is just reminding me that I need to pick up some new t-shirts and it is always nice to upgrade the staples that you do wear all the time just to find something that's going to last and really nails the fit that you want. These other t-shirts that I have are actually ones that I do really, really like. This gray one right here is from Arquette and I kind of picked this up on a whim just to see how I would like Arquette's t-shirts. I wanted to wait for a while to see how it held up and just how it looked overall. It's been a couple of months now. I think I picked this up towards the beginning of the year and I can safely say that these t-shirts are really, really nice. You can see that the Arquette one definitely has a thicker, more pronounced like ribbing and elastic around the collar. And you can see on the hanger that it just hangs so much more nicely. It's so much more straight and fitted. And I also really like the fabric on this t-shirt. It's 100% cotton and it doesn't feel thin at all, but it just has the perfect weight to it where it has a really nice drape to it. It's easy to tuck in. It's not too boxy or anything. And it just falls in a really nice flattering way on the body. I think the one thing I would change about this t-shirt is that I wish the sleeves were just a teeny tiny bit shorter, but even still, I think I'm gonna have to pick up this t-shirt in a couple of different colors. And then my last t-shirt that I have here is this one from a brand called Comfort Colors. You can buy these t-shirts off of Amazon. They're super affordable. They come in so many different colors and I think I am going to pick them up in a couple more. These t-shirts are unisex. I have mine in a size medium, so they definitely are a little bit more oversized than the other t-shirts but I think it's a really cute fit. And my favorite way to style this is with some biker shorts, but I also just love to wear the shirt around at home. I have a one top here that isn't quite a basic t-shirt, but it's one that I reach for numerous times this season. It's a little bit more of a knit material, so not quite as lightweight as some of the other options that I ended up wearing more, but I really like the fit of this top because with my proportions and my top part, being a little bit wider. I've always found that certain fitted tops, especially ones with a little bit of a higher neckline, look a little bit more suffocating on me for lack of a better term. While this top is definitely more on the fitted side on me, I think it just looks so much more flattering because it has more of that V neckline and it's a lot more open. I also think that the collar actually helps a lot too because it just kind of adds that like softness to it and it frames the area really well without just like being like a sharp V neckline, if that makes sense. Okay, this shirt was actually kind of a surprise to me, but I ended up reaching for it quite a bit the past few weeks. This is a black short sleeve linen button up from Uniqlo, and I actually purchased this in three different colors when I first bought it. I got it in mustard, black, and cream. I still have the cream one and the black one, of course, but I've definitely gotten more use out of the black one. I find that this top is just really easy to dress up and dress down. It's super versatile. I end up reaching for this on days where I want to look a little bit more put together. I don't want to just wear like a basic t-shirt, but I still want to be really, really comfortable. I don't want to wear anything fitted and the shirt is perfect for that. It has a really nice boxy fit that isn't too cropped, really easy to style. And I also just think that the black one looks a lot nicer than the other colors because it doesn't really show the wrinkles as much. Definitely always gonna get more wear out of the clothes that I don't have to iron and steam every time. Moving on to tank tops, I brought out three and they are all white. <laughs> this top is one that I've had for years now and it continues to be just like one of the staples in my wardrobe if I ever want something really nice and fitted and cropped. I feel like this tank is just so flattering. It really snatches you in. It has a really nice, simple, kind of wide U neckline, but this top is also totally bra friendly. I picked this up in black this summer because I knew I wore the white one so much, but I still reach for this one a lot more. 
as you can tell I definitely gravitate towards the white tanks more. This tank is one that I picked up this summer. It's also from Aritzia, but this one is by the brand TNA. They look pretty similar here, but I do actually really like having both options. This one is really nice because it's a little bit more of like a lightweight option, both in terms of the actual material of it, as well as the cut of it. This one has a little bit more of a scoop neckline, and I think the fit is overall a little bit more dainty I guess. And then lastly I have this tank right here which is from Target. I also have talked about this in previous videos but this one is a full length tank and I've been really loving the fit of this one. This one does have a little bit of a higher neckline as well as I would say like slightly thicker straps but I still find it to be really flattering and not too overwhelming on my shape because it is a sleeveless top and there is just like less fabric. Okay, finally moving on to button-ups. These have actually been my favorite wardrobe addition and discovery this summer. These are the two button-ups that I end up wearing the most this summer and I'm actually kind of surprised, but not really. Blue one is more of a surprise to me. I picked it up from H&M. I'm actually just realizing that this shirt isn't completely blue. It has a bunch of really tiny white stripes all throughout it. And I'm kind of surprised by this shirt because I feel like in the past, this color has been something that I struggled to style before. I always felt like it was too professional and I couldn't really pull it off in a casual setting. But I think this fabric for sure really helps as well as even like the subtle striping on the shirt. Something about it is just really soft and wearable. This summer, honestly, I really have only been wearing neutrals and that's a pretty big change for me because I think before I would gravitate towards a lot of color and floral patterns in the summertime. And I think when my outfits felt very black and white and basic and I was looking for a little bit of color to add to it, this shirt was definitely the easiest one to grab for. It's still a very neutral color, but I think it was a nice way to just make an outfit seem a little bit less boring and this ended up being a nice unexpected find. And then this button up right here has been a huge standout for me this summer and I've literally only had it for two weeks. This is from the Swedish brand Jerf Avenue. This is just one of those pieces that's kind of life-changing once it enters your wardrobe. I kind of bought it on a whim because I wanted to try a couple of things out from this brand and I thought that this was one of the pieces that I would get the most wear out of. It wasn't the smartest purchase because the fit is actually pretty similar to the white button up that I got from Zara just a couple of weeks before, but I'm so so happy that I ended up getting it. This button up just has the perfect boxy fit to it. The material on this is definitely heavier than the Zara one, but because of that I think it drapes a little bit nicer. It's also more of a woven texture in contrast with the smooth poplin, and I find it to be a lot more forgiving when it comes to wrinkles. So I think the amazing thing about this shirt is that it actually looks good worn multiple ways. It's not like one of those tops that only looks good when you tuck it in or when you unbutton it, but it actually looks so good whether it's buttoned up. I like to leave the top a little bit looser and then it kind of just like falls off the shoulder just a little bit. It's perfect worn unbuttoned as just an overshirt and it actually also looks really cute if you just tie up the bottom. So yeah, can't say enough good things about this top and I've officially become a really big fan of this brand. Finally, we're gonna talk about some bottoms. Now, this is definitely the area where I feel like my wardrobe was the most lacking this summer. I honestly never really wore shorts at all prior to moving to New York, so I didn't really have much to start with this summer, and it took me a little while to really figure out what I actually wanted. My first bottoms are these shorts right here. These are a recent find. I didn't really get these until towards the end of summer, which is a shame, but I'm really happy that they're in my life now. These are the Goldie Parker long shorts. I love a Goldie denim and these shorts are no exception. I freaking love the wash of them. They have such a nice like vintage looking, slightly distressed wash to them. I ended up wearing these nonstop since I got them because they are so comfortable. I have them in a size 24 and my waist is about 25 inches, but a Goldie definitely runs large and some of their styles have a little bit more of a roomy, oversized fit to them. For these, I only sized down once and they are a little bit loose around the waist, but because of that, they're super comfortable to wear. Denim always looks so good when it's super fitted and tight around your waist, but it really just isn't the most comfortable thing. I've already spoken quite a bit about these. I mentioned them in my August favorites video. And when I got these, I ended up ordering another pair of shorts from Goldie as well in a different style. It's all in the details. I ended up liking this one so much more because one, it's a little bit longer. It covers a little bit more of my thighs. Two, it has more of this like A-line shape to it. And you can kind of see how the, the hem is a little bit angled. It's not like a cut straight across. 
So I just find this cut to be super flattering. The shape really balances out my top half that's a little bit on the wider side. And yeah, I think it's just really important and makes a huge difference when you spend the time to really find the cut of clothing that you think looks the best on your body. I definitely have to mention these shorts and it's so funny because I was definitely declaring these shorts to be like my favorite thing ever for the summer and you really just don't know what's going to end up being one of your favorite most worn items until the end of the season. I think these were a great find from H&M this year. They came in a bunch of colors and they're just like a really nice kind of longer Bermuda style short that has this really nice tailored pleated style. Aritzia has a really similar pair of shorts called the Effortless Shorts and those go for almost $100. I did end up wearing these quite a bit but because these shorts were on the longer side and I kept putting off getting them hemmed. I didn't really love reaching for these shorts for a while because they didn't have the best fit. So I think that's something that I definitely want to keep in mind for the future. If I ever find something where I'm like, oh, this would look great if I tailored it, I really need to weigh the cost of taking the item to the tailor, the cost of actually getting the item tailored, and then going to pick it up and all that stuff. Another piece that I actually ended up wearing a ton, especially right when I moved in, is this little skirt right here. This is a really cute little mini skirt that I thrifted a year or two ago. And I ended up just wearing this a ton because it was one of the few things that I had in the beginning that was comfortable enough to wear. At this point, I've just realized that mini skirts aren't really my thing. I would much rather wear something like this that has a nice little elastic waist. It's nice and flowy. And of course, it also helps that this is in a nice neutral colorway. I have a one pair of pants that I got a ton of wear out of this summer. And at one point I had to stop myself from wearing these because I was literally wearing them every time I went out. But these are a nice pair of black linen pants from Arquette. I picked these up at the beginning of the season or maybe spring and these pants have definitely become a staple for me. I'm really glad I got the black because I don't have to worry about it being too sheer or anything and it's really easy to dress up. And I realize I'm actually really picky about how elasticated bottoms fit on me. I don't like it when they're too loose and I have to tie them to fit, but I also don't obviously want them to be too tight. And out of all of my high-waisted elasticized pants, this one definitely fits the best and is the most comfortable. So yeah, I love these a lot. They have a really great classic fit to them. That makes me confident that I would still wear these year after year. So if I can find these on sale in another color or maybe wait until a next warmer season rolls around, I think I might pick up another pair of these. Okay, we finally made it through all the clothing. Now I'm just going to share my most worn bags and then we can wrap this up. So definitely my most worn leather bags this summer were these two. I have this ivory colored one from Bottega Veneta and this camel brown one from Dooney & Burke. I've already talked about this bag a lot on my channel, but I'm really happy with this purchase. I've gotten so much wear out of this bag and although it definitely is scary to have such a light colored bag, I just really loved how this went with all my outfits and brightened everything up. It looked really like summery but sophisticated and it's actually really really versatile. I mentioned this before but this bag actually holds more than you would think. I can actually fit a camera in here along with my phone, keys, and wallet. Although my phone is actually kind of a tight fit. I end up just like holding it most of the time. This bag right here is definitely my most practical of bags and my mom actually gave this to me right before I moved to New York, so thank you, mom. First of all, this bag just feels so sturdy. The leather seems to be coated, so it's definitely super, super sturdy. It's definitely not gonna scratch or anything like that. I took this bag with me when we went kayaking and it got all wet and it looks good as new. But when it comes to crossbody bags, this camera style shape is definitely, I think, the most functional of them. It just fits the most without being too big. I can fit both my vlogging camera and my film camera in here along with all of the other essentials that I need. So I do like to grab for this bag whenever I run errands or I'm traveling. It's not my favorite bag aesthetically. I feel like this color also is a little bit orangey for my taste. Just a note to future Allison, if you ever find a camera style bag that you really like, just know that you're definitely gonna get a lot of use out of it. And then this last bag was definitely my savior when it came to adding some personality and a pop of color to my outfits. I got this one from Etsy and I will link the seller that I got it from below, but there's just so many things I love about this bag. It has so many of the trends that I've been obsessed with this year. It has the green, it has the checkered print, and it has that like 
woven crochet texture to it. It just brightens up any of the neutral outfits that I end up putting together with those pieces and it's definitely one of my favorite purchases of the season. All right, that is all I have. I really enjoyed making this video and I hope you guys found it helpful or are inspired to take a look at your own closet. It's really interesting to think that if this were all the summer clothing that I had, I would probably be good for the majority of the season. But anyway, it was really fun going through my most worn clothing and finding things that I could take away from this. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Cause you're calling out to me, but that's somewhere I gotta be. Wouldn't it be nice if time was better?